Hello, we're back. I hope you enjoyed your break. And now we deep dive into the Data Spaces Support Center's products and the many, 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 many ways we support data spaces. And uh, perhaps you've heard of some of our assets, perhaps not. But still, it's not every day that you have DSSC's very own experts describing them to you live on stage. And to guide the session, I would like to welcome back to stage Professor Boris Otto, Managing Director of Fraunhofer ESST and Coordinator of the Data Spaces Support Center. Yes, thank you, Clara. Um, I briefly mentioned that earlier in the first session before the break that um, there are, as Clara uh, um, framed it, multiple ways um, how the DSSC supports data spaces. And I also um, outlined a couple of them um, earlier on. Um, that's why I'm even more happy that we now can, let's say, go into the details. And it also shows you that this is really a team effort that we are doing here, right? Because I'm just, you know, facilitating this next session because the people who actually did the work, and I can tell you it was a lot of work, uh, will present the various assets, um, of course, uh, by themselves. And, um, and uh, without further ado, in order not to um, consume too much of the precious time, I first would like to ask Bert Verdonk on the stage in order to set the scene a little bit. Bert. So thank you. There's a whole series of topics to be covered in this session, so it, we will try to keep it quite high-paced. Um, and to start it off, we will talk to you a little bit about the assets and the conceptual models. Um, assets is anything that the Data Space Support Center is working on to help you. Those are the, the, the starting point, the foundation of the knowledge that we want to get shared. And it's not just our knowledge, it is co-created with many participants in the community of practice and the stakeholder forum. And, and everyone that uh, Anna and team have, have talked to you about before have contributed to uh, these assets. They are not final. We work in an iterative manner and the assets will continue to evolve. But we are happy today to uh, announce version one of the Blueprint publication after 0 0.5 in September. Um, we feel we have a good baseline to continue the discussion. The work is not finished, so we remain very open for feedback. Um, this is the asset model. Some people are very visual and they love these types of schemas. Some people hate them. So I will tell you also a bit of a story on top of the picture. The essence of what we do is to support the creation and the fruition of data spaces. Their first initiatives, when they go into production, they, are, they become active data spaces. And we've designed the blueprint to be the guiding um, materials, the methodology, the concepts are defined in that blueprint, which will be detailed to you much further. And there are several constituents of that blueprint. But the blueprint doesn't stand on its own. We start with a glossary, a starter kit is the document to, to let people be introduced to the entire concept. And again, the data space uh, blueprint is co-created with the network of stakeholders. It feeds the maturity model that you've heard about before. And the blueprint is also an inspiration for implementations. So it's just not a theory. It's just not PowerPoint schemas and texts. It is a starting point for translating building blocks into components. Components are very detailed technical specifications that can be implemented, not by the DSCC. We are not creating software, but other participants are creating these implementations. And we do co will collect implementations in a toolbox such that these components become um, easier to use. So that is roughly um, at 10,000 feet an overview of all the assets we're working on. And if at a certain time you get lost, you can always get back to this figure to find out, okay, why the heck are they working on this and how does it relate to some other deliverables of the project? Um, the other uh, important part of the assets is these are also deliverables that we believe have sustained value after this project will finish. So very early on, we started to think, okay, what are the important elements that need to survive beyond the timeline of this project? And so anything on here, we believe, has this sustaining value, and we will take measures to and prepare for making sure that they can be maintained, can continue to evolve also after the end of this project. 
Next, what we need in order to further understand uh, the materials that we work on is uh, the conceptual model. This is a view on the conceptual model, uh, what we call level one, which is the data space model. You see the data space object in there. And that is already a quite difficult term to properly define. Um, that's why these models are so important to show how the uh, constituents of a concept relate uh, with respect to each other. Uh, this is close to a ULM diagram. I would not say it is 100% ULM proof that you can uh, um, uh, just implement this in a schema tomorrow. But um, it is quite accurate in um, explaining the relationships between all the constituent uh, concepts behind a data space. This is the highest level model, and it clarifies very important terms like the data space use cases, which is, are the starting point for defining data products. Data products get exchanged with between parties through transactions. Participants do that, but they do that according to a certain governance framework, which is managed by a governance authority. A data space is then implemented through some infrastructural elements and implements a number of functions. So now, in three sentences, I've explained this, but I can tell you there's a much more thought and text required to, uh, to move forward. But this is the highest level conceptual model that we have been working on. In this version, and um, by the way, for the people who um, saw this uh, already in September in the 0.5, we didn't really change it. So at least at this level, this model is pretty stable and clear. In the release now, we've started to detail out this concept in the next uh, level. I'm just showing one. You will find more of these across the blueprint. <clears throat> Um, this is just a detail out, and again, you will see it's not very, very simple, detailing out the data product concept. And very rapidly, you will see that there is business language around the data product, and there is very purely technical um, explanations around the data product and specifications. Um, a data product is owned, it is used by parties, uh, it leads to contractual templates and terms and conditions. So there's a lot to say to properly define that data product concept. I'm not going in all the details here. Uh, by the way, some part is grayed out because we also don't reinvent the wheel. We refer as much as possible to existing uh, models, uh, in this case like the DCAT or the ODRL, and we reference as much as possible the existing standards uh, around these concepts. So the purpose of this introduction is not to explain you fully these models, it is to um, uh, warm your appetite to go inspect and explore them as you will find them throughout the blueprint. Then I want to pass it on to Tobias to introduce us to the glossary. Yes, thank you very much, Bert, for the um, brief introduction of the conceptual model. And um, yeah, very closely uh, related to the glossary, uh, to the conceptual model. You've seen terms in the conceptual model, but um, with reference and um, with uh, relationships. But um, one thing is not highlighted there. It's um, how we define these terms and what criteria we have for these terms. Um, and as data spaces, as you might know, is a very innovative domain. And um, just like a data space itself, it's very a fragmented um, development with very um, many and uh, distributed um, projects. And um, so as the projects emerge, the language within the projects emerge. And um, we see now a landscape of sometimes ambiguous um, terminology and concepts that are defined um, uh, differently um, across all the projects. And um, what we want to achieve with the glossary is um, nothing less than a convergence for the language, um, for clarity and efficiency of um, yeah, talking about data spaces and uh, writing about data space and for the development. And um, that's, we have, that's why we have on the, on the one hand the conceptual model and on the other hand the glossary. And yeah, you might ask, okay, why another glossary? Um, but yeah, as, you, um, as with every um, social development, um, language is the essence of um, innovations. And when you can't speak with each other, um, you can't um, achieve any substantial innovation or um, goal that you want to achieve with your society and 
The same goes for the data spaces, of course. And um, yeah, as I said, um, I'm very happy because language develops by speaking with each other um, across different uh, cultures, let's say, or projects in that regard. And um, we make a huge step with the 1.0 blueprint into a direction of a converged glossary. Um, we build on many discussions on other domains, legislation, of course, the Data Governance Act, Data Act, um, but also on other initiatives which uh, we were talking with. And um, I'm super happy that we had so many discussions um, and comments. Um, I see I, I wrote four editors, but we were actually five, so Bert was one of them, um, Yogi, Asatu, Riegs from TNO, and myself. Um, the complete DSSC work together, the network of stakeholder, and I'm very happy to have all your comments in the document. Um, it was very hard, but um, to, to achieve the convergence amongst all these comments. But um, as I said, without talking with each other, we cannot develop a common language. Um, and finally, we were able to define 11 groups of terms with approximately 100 terms within um, the glossary. Um, and I'm also happy that the core terms remained more or less stable um, from the last to this um, iteration. And so we hope that the more we talk with each other and the more you are also involved in the co-creation process of the glossary and also the conceptual model. Um, we have the chance to have a very stable um, glossary and also conceptual model in the next iteration of the blueprint. And so if you allow me one wish, so um, just um, let's speak the same language, refer to the DSSC glossary, um, work with us together to develop our common language. And yeah, that's my wish for the end. And I will thank you all for participating today and the other days. And now to Omo, I would like to hand over to you. Thank you so much. And now, now I, first I will make a shocking revelation. Not all people in Europe know about data spaces. Okay. So, so that, that, that's, why, that's why when we started, uh, we, we realized that and, and we planned for it that uh, we, we actually need something to start with. A starter kit that would help uh, anybody who is interested about data spaces to open it up and, and, and see that, okay, what, what is it all about? What, 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 is, what is this data space as a, as a concept? And, and what kind of perspectives does it, does it include? So I think uh, one and a half years ago, we were in this situation, and, and they still are, mostly, mostly I, I would say, the motiv with the motivation. So uh, you, you know that uh, the, this is really a pivotal moment for the whole EU data economy. So, and, and we, have, we are seeing that uh, this new initiative is coming all the time. One and a half years ago, it was like not so much, but there was a lot of confusion about what, how, to, how to go forward, what kind of things there, what are the perspectives, and, and so on. And in order to create the inter, interoperability for data spaces in Europe, that, that's what we are aiming at. We, that's the mission here. So there was a need for, for an entry point to, to data spaces and, and uh, also DSSC assets. It's, uh, that, uh, that we, anybody can go in and, and study that and, 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 and hop into the DSSC asset and, and those materials we are providing. So uh, what happened was that, um, uh, in fact, very quickly when we when started in the, well, in the, in, uh, that was in October, in, in one and a half years ago, when we started, we started working on the starter kit. We had like four months and five months about time for the milestone. But what happened is that the, the well, the starter kit was, was like in, 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 in need, in, need in, in, in the community immediately. Okay. So, so we started so that we started drafting that. We had the experts, we just got known with each other and, and, uh, all, and also with the processes and, 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 uh, and the community. So we drafted a version of, of, of Starter Kit in a, in a month and, and then spread it to the com throughout the community. 
having the first workshop in, in EBDVF in, in, in that year. And uh, after that, we have had the draft going on, getting feedback all the time, and we had a nice Christmas present to, to everybody to, 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 to take a look at what, what we have been achieving. Eventually, in February next year, it was, it was released as, as uh, version 1.0 of, of the of the, of the starter kit, and, and it's, it has been like that, and, and it, it's a very, very good paper. I'm just opening up here, in, fa in fact. And, and um, it's a very easy to read introduction to data spaces and, and DSSC. And uh, to whom it's, it's, it's uh, made for, it's uh, for data space designers, data producers, data consumers, and, and, and so on, Any, anybody who's interested on, on data spaces topic. And, yeah, I have seen many times the, let's say, the data spaces startup checklist uh, referred to. It, it's really nice, nice and easy to read, read um, checklist on, on what what uh, what kind of questions you might want to ask when when you start a, start a data space. Then there's business perspective about values and models. I, I think we have been talking about these these aspects very many times. But then then it was not so so exactly clear that how to tackle that. The legal aspects operational activities, how to create, what, what kind of operations you need for, for governance, for example, that, uh, that you create a data space. And functionalities, what, what, does the, what functionalities does the data space fulfill and, and what kind of technologies there, there, there should be taken into consideration. And one thing is that we many times look at the, the, these issues as, 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 let's say, they are kind of like resources that, that we use them as, as, as resources like looking at the technology. We take that, that and this technology. But then al also you need to have a design approach. That, that's the, the activity of design of, of, of the data spaces where, where you put all this all together. And ev eventually the uh, data space, uh, this is DSSC blueprint and, and, uh, and what, what we are doing. Uh, we, we plan for not, not big update, but the um, small update after, after this blueprint release. So just linking, linking that. So that's it. Please go and check it out. It's rather good mat material now to matize. Thanks, uh, Tomo, and uh, it was already mentioned, the blueprints. Uh, I know many of you have uh, contributed uh, to uh, where we are today, because today is, uh, as it was said, the launch of version 1.0 of, uh, of the blueprint. The blueprint for the common European data spaces. Why do we have it? Well, for a number of reasons. First of all, we want to get data space initiatives started, and especially to get to a higher flight level much quicker than it was possible in the past. We want to make sure that if you're investing, and Europe and companies and initiatives are investing a lot of money, um, that you can make sure that it is future-proof because you use the common standards that we expect everyone to, uh, to use. And finally, and we've heard that a lot also here during this uh, symposium, we need to work together. Organizations want to join multiple data spaces. Initiatives in different countries need to work together. If you build technology, then you want to make sure that your technology works for multiple domains. So we need to federate, we need to scale, we need to make sure that the market becomes bigger and that at the end of the day, we can create more value for end users. So that's the blueprint. It's about building blocks, and if you want to see it, here it is. I know some of you might have your laptops open or telephones. If you go to our website, dssc.eu, and if you click on uh, offers, then you can come to uh, this particular page. Um, and that, that is where you find all the content of the blueprint, the starter kit, and other elements that we uh, uh, discuss uh, today. And to make life simple, the blueprint contains what we call building blocks. Um, uh, building blocks in two categories. Uh, technical building blocks that we discussed a lot uh, during this uh, uh, conference, uh, but also business and organizational building blocks. This is really an addition. We'll have a session later today where I will show that, but this is really an addition to uh, the earlier work that has taken place. And for each of the, of the building blocks, uh, we have identified a couple of things. First of all, what are the required capabilities that you need on a particular business element or a particular technical element? Think of, for instance, identity management on the technical uh, level and trust. 
um, and the business model and the legal framework uh, on an organizational level. Then we provide a list of core design decisions that each data space should take. What is my governance model? How do I do identity management, etc.? We provide best practices and guidance, but at the end of the day, we also help you to make the right decisions. Then we have specifications and common standards uh, available. And finally, we provide links to other further reading material uh, where you can find more background and more examples of uh, those, uh, those building blocks. That's what I want to uh, talk to you about here. We'll have a session later to go more in depth. Um, but I want to finish off by saying that what we have here today is a product of the Data Space Support Center, but also of many of you. So I want to have a big applause for all of you that have contributed to this version of the, of the blueprint. <laughs> and what was really instrumental is our network of stakeholders uh, through which we are doing this work. And to talk about that, I would like to invite uh, Ana Garcia on the, on the stage. Ana. Thank you, thank you, Matthijs, and um, I'm very lucky that we had uh, time before to present the network of stakeholders, so I don't need to present it again. Uh, but it was very important to bring it to this block uh, because it's a very important component also of our assets. The network of stakeholders is also an asset in itself, uh, and it's very important uh, for everything that we are doing, but also for the sustainability of the assets that we are producing now. So I just wanted to bring a few elements uh, that have not been mentioned, uh, all of them uh, today. Uh, this was mentioned before, but still I want to emphasize the, and, and thank the relationship managers that have been working with the community of practice. Uh, because that has been a support service that the SEC has been uh, given to, uh, to the network of stakeholders. But I want to also talk about the um, uh, other ways, uh, other ways of supporting. And for instance, we established um, thematic groups, and um, I think it was actually in June last year. And since uh, last year, I think we, we have three thematic groups, uh, technology, business, and also in governance. And uh, it has been a very good element for knowledge sharing. And the knowledge sharing, the co-learning, this is in itself a service that the community gives to the community, so to speak. Uh, and has been a very important a part also on the supporting on the co-creation of, um, of the blueprint and other assets. But we also have the, the expert groups, and these are the ones that are really more connected with the blueprint, with what Matthijs has been explaining. And our network of stakeholders has had the capacity to influence and support the, the, the real development of the assets. And that's also a service that the community receives from, from the Data Spaces Support Center. Of course, uh, uh, we need to be very consistent with our communications. We will have uh, presentations uh, later on. But through our network of stakeholders, we have facilitated as well uh, a lot of communication to make sure that everybody was aware of what is going on at any moment. Very important. Insights and visibility as well. Uh, this is very much uh, connected with the co-learning, how we have learned for everything that uh, all the initiatives and stakeholders around us uh, have brought to all the different workshops, meetings, activities, uh, and that's very, very important. And finally, I think there is a very important point of, of the network of stakeholders that is this matchmaking, and that's also a service, a support service for everyone. So we, talk, uh, we heard in the previous channel that different data spaces, they need to communicate to each other, they need to find each other, but also they need to find others, other initiatives, or other projects, or other people. And I think that service, when you build a big network of stakeholders, uh, that's something that you are also facilitating. And that's all from my side, thank you very much. And now let's uh, uh, go to the next uh, asset and I would like to invite uh, Mariano Blaya that is going to talk about the radar but also the different channels we have to support the community. Thank you very much. Hello. Thank you, Anna. So, uh, the radar. I would like to start off with a question for you, for the audience. No worry, it's very easy. So, those, those of you in the, in, the, in the audience who already know the radar, please raise your hand. Okay, 
Thank you. So for those of you who don't know the, the data space uh, radar, the data space radar is a, a tool that allows the data spaces initiatives to add the, the, information, the information model of the data space there as, as well as use cases. So you have a data space initiative running or in project or in a, a preparation one, then you would like to, provide, to give visibility to that initiative. Then you can go to the radar, add the data, and then that uh, initiative and that information model will be part of the radar and will be published for the whole um, community. So this is what, what we are doing in the, in the radar. So the good news is, next slide, is that we have a new version of the radar. Uh, this is what I would like to announce today. We have this new version of the radar, which you can see on the right, right hand side. It has the traditional radar view, but also there is another view, a geographical view, and also in terms of uh, technologies. So every da data space initiative can add the technologies. So far we have the building blocks, but we are planning to add some more technologies. So it's an um, inventory of the data spaces initiatives with all the information that can be done. As you can see, as of last week, when I put together this slide, we had 150 entries uh, pertaining to 23 sectors, but this is growing. I think we, we have a few more uh, this week already. It's growing every week. And on the left-hand side of the, of, the, of the slide, you can see, because the, the theme of, the, of this presentation was how these tools can assist you. And the, well, they can assist you in different ways, using the map view, using advanced filtering, so you can search even for country. Who is the, what is the country with more data spaces initiatives? Is it Germany? Is it France? Is it Spain? Well, you can go there and filter, and you will see how many are in, in, in each country. And um, well, then of course you can showcase your data space uh, initiative. This is one of the main purposes. And I'm sure that you, rather than we, what we do have now, is what is coming next. So we would like to focus our our roadmap in, in, in a few topics. One is the data uh, quality. We would like to improve it to make sure that the data is correct and is up to date because these data species initiatives are growing so fast that from one month to the other the, 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 the information changes. So we would like to get regular updated and we would like also to provide a way for the data owner, which is the data space initiative, to control and to have control of their data. So it's not that we ask them to update it, but they, they will be able to update it at any point in time. Then, uh, in order to add, to add some uh, agility to, 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 to this uh, radar tool, we would like to have quarterly releases. The next major release is scheduled for September this year, but probably we'll have an intermediate release, maybe an internal one, but I can announce that the next major one will be in September this year. As I mentioned before, there are some technologies that you can add to describe your data space initiative, but we would like to add more. We have building blocks already, but you know, with the Blueprint 1.0, we have some, some uh, new concepts like components, and we would like to add the DSSC components to the, to the uh, radar, and also standards. So the description of what is the, 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 the data space is more and more complete. Another part that we would like to improve is the sharing, how, so, the radar tool ingests the information, but that information is published at the moment, but we would like to be able to reuse it, to offer to, 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 to other parties in a, in, in a proper way. Some ways could be an API, an RSS, but well, sometimes we have discussions, why don't we implement a data space by ourselves? So we are all, all the time talking about data spaces. Why don't we build a data space for sharing the data of the radar. That's just an, an idea, and I would like to have your feedback if you have any, any ideas of how to do it, if you think it would be uh, fruitful. And yeah, that's it about the radar. And I happen to cover the next block as well, which is the support team. So the support team, who is the support team? Is the team behind, when you go to our website and create a ticket, to request some information, support team is the team behind that. We receive the ticket, we analyze it, we try to understand it, we, most of the times we do. If we don't understand it, we request further information, 
And if the, if, the, uh, if the ticket is easy because it's kind of you want to be added to that part of the website, then it's fine, we go and do it. But if it's a question about you know, standards, the, now the blueprint, the technologies, then we, uh, we talk to the, to, the, to the experts and we ask people to provide a, an answer. We are receiving many requests regarding the governance and the business models. Of course, we're still receiving uh, questions regarding the technology, but as has been mentioned a number of times, the technology is kind of okay, but now it's the organizational part and the governance what is creating uh, uh, some, some, some questions. So, well, now you have a, a, a face to blame if something doesn't work, if you send the request and it's not answered. But also you have a face to thank if, if, if everything goes fine. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, about the support team, let me go numerical. Right? So what I would like is to show you in terms of, better, ahead, uh, beside the description I, I, I provided already, in terms of numbers. So 1,200, 100, two, uh, 1,200 tickets were created and resolved in the last 12 months. For those 1,200, uh, 600 were related to the newsletter. So si around 600 people wanted to subscribe to the newsletter. We received the request and we sent that request to Tonia there and she adds that. <laughs> yeah. 600, so yeah, they're good numbers. Around 200 were requests people that wanted to join the network of stakeholders and those, we receive those, we understand, we see that the request is properly filled, and then we send that to basically Sile and Sabas. And then they analyze if this is possible for them to join the network stakeholders in the different things, in the community of practice, liaisons, or, or strategic st stakeholder forum. The other number, 100, is, is tickets re related to the platform. We actually use the JIRA tool to organize ourselves internally within the platform task. So if I want to, to update something or correct something in, in the platform, I myself create a ticket. And that's why we have 100. Of course, we accept tickets from outside and from other teams. That was the 100. The 400 is others. So those that are not categorized in the previous uh, categories. And this, I will leave it for later for the next steps. 80 of them, 80 out of the 1,200 were deflected, but were deflected not because we didn't want to respond. Most of the times, you know, some, sometimes we get spam, we have a request of uh, people who want to buy a building block and say, hey, we don't sell building blocks, we specify building blocks or things like that. So requests that are not properly uh, addressed. And some of the times, I would say that half of these 80 uh, requests or tickets are deflected because they, somebody is asking us something, the, the question is not clear, we request additional information, and that additional information doesn't come back to us. And after one week or two weeks, well, we close the ticket. We insist, please provide this information. Information is not provided, we close it. So what is next for the, in the support team area? We would like to optimize the quality and response time. We started measuring how long it takes us to respond. So far, we were just doing our best effort basis, and now we, we want to really measure it, but in order to reach conclusions, we need to understand that the measure is correct and makes sense, we are there. One other thing is we'd like to support the data spaces initiatives together with the, with the community of practice and with the network stakeholders, we would like to work closer to them and provide better support to the data spaces initiatives. It's not an easy topic because questions can come from regarding any topic. What we would like is to understand the needs ahead and then plan what the support can, be, can, can consist of. That's something that we would like to develop further in the next weeks and months. Then, that's why I said I, I, I wanted to defer the, the, the other uh, category. In the other category, of course, we can have, a, a, we can narrow down what the other category is. Maybe we can see other, other categories. Uh, for that, yeah, we are 
we don't really know how to do it. We need to split and find out what categories make sense and then how to automatically assign a category to a ticket. We're using, I don't know, we are considering chat GPT or artificial intelligence things, so it can automatically, I don't know, but something that we would like to do. Of course, we will, ex we will ex expand the support to the new uh, uh, assets, like the toolbox, like the components, and the, and the updated. And one thing that is, well, we're challenging, we're challenging ourselves here, we would like to measure the customer satisfaction. We are using Jira, and one, one feature that is available there is that everyone, when you receive a response, you can click on one star to five stars, and well, Maybe we will dare to go ahead with that and challenge ourselves. So th with that said, I think it's time for you, Tonya, to tell us about the communication. Thank you very much. So I think that all of you know how to be subscribed to the SSC newsletter because we have more than 600 tickets. But I have to say that there are many ways on how uh, you can be stay connected and informed in uh, Data Space Super Center. Um, so first of all, we have the website where you can find uh, all the documentation related to uh, the blueprint, uh, the conceptual model, glossaries. So the, the, the website is the main point where you can find uh, as I said, all the information um, related to uh, tech uh, documentation as well. Um, we uh, have also uh, the LinkedIn, uh, the LinkedIn social media and, uh, and also newsletter where uh, we provide to all of you the information related to the next events, uh, uh, webinars that we organize, the latest news. And uh, specifically, um, we have every month uh, an insect series. It's a specific webinar that we organize uh, related to the hot topic we have in the Data Space Super Center. And this is a, a very important appointment. So the, the call to action for all of you is uh, to be part of this monthly um, webinar. But if you cannot be part of the, of the webinar we organize, don't worry because we have also all the um, uh, webinar recorded and uh, uh, uploaded in the um, YouTube. You can find on YouTube a specific channel on DSSC where you can relieve all the um, webinars, uh, uh, monthly webinars we had from the very beginning. So uh, uh, it's a very important channel. And uh, of course, uh, here is the call to action for all of you is subscribe to the newsletter, to the SSC newsletter is, uh, I have to say was, uh, this newsletter was a success because uh, uh, we had many, many uh, subscribers and uh, through the newsletter we inform you uh, about all the latest news on uh, uh, the SSC, the next uh, uh, events, the next uh, uh, also information about the next uh, uh, data space uh, symposium. Uh, and uh, I want to also say that uh, the, um, uh, uh, the part of communication in charge for the data space super center was one of the organizer of the uh, data space symposium as well. So we are a huge team and uh, so my, uh, I encourage you to be, uh, be part of the, of the newsletter to receive all the information and of course uh, uh, be part of also of the next uh, Data Space Symposium. So I call uh, on stage uh, Gianfranco Cecconi. And there is no slide for, for this one. This is the part of the session when we pick a random member of the audience and we uh, test them if you remember all of this. Uh, oh, you got me already, okay, I'm kidding. So the, there is only one thing I wanted to add before uh, going over to the next session is that, uh, remember, all of this is something you are producing. So your engagement is fundamental to what we do. Uh, and uh, at the same time, we are also part of a larger system. I mean, our colleagues from uh, the EU Simple uh, set of initiatives are in the audience. They also will rely on our work. And by relying on our work, they rely on your work. This is a sort of a reminder of how much uh, the ecosystem depends on itself for its success. Uh, there's not much really to say here. Just uh, get in touch with us, follow 
uh, all of the work we do through the newsletter, find the opportunity to engage. Uh, I, literally, our colleagues are already planning for the next blueprint, literally, these days. I, I told them, well, are you crazy? I mean, we haven't even finished the, the project yet at this moment, and you're already working on the next one. Yes, that's what we do. That's what we have to do to be ready for you. So thanks again to all of you who worked uh, with us, and, and let's proceed for the morning. Thank you.